Good day. For those of you who do not know us, we're the instructional staff for ECE 150. Professors Hiran Patel and Verna Dito and Douglas Harder. In this topic, we're going to look at conditional statements and comparison operators. Now, in this lesson, we will describe the need for executing code conditionally. In programming, we can conditionally execute code, that is, do something, if a condition, a Boolean valued statement, that is, is true. Alternatively, we can do something else if that condition is false. Here's a very common engineering application. Now, up until this point in the course, we have focused entirely on examples with serial execution. That is, the entire program is a sequence of statements, and each statement is executed one statement at a time. Now, suppose we only wanted to execute a particular statement if an actual condition is true. So, for example, we may ask the user for a value and then execute this piece of code or that piece of code based on the value the user entered. Here is an example of conditional execution. In this example, we ask the user to enter a number x. Now, the value the user enters is assigned to the local variable x, and then we ask if x is greater than or equal to 0, we then proceed to write down that the absolute value of x is equal to x. However, if x was not greater than or equal to 0, then we print out the absolute value of x is negative x. So if the user entered negative 1, then this would print the absolute value of x is equal to the negated value of negative 1, which is 1. If the user entered a positive number, the first block is executed. Otherwise, the second block of statements is executed. Suppose we have a Boolean valued condition, and we may want to execute either one or a different block of code depending on whether or not that Boolean valued condition is true or false. In that case, we use a conditional statement. The form of conditional statement is the keyword if followed by the condition in parentheses. We'll look at this next. And this is followed by the consequent block, which is executed only if the Boolean valued condition is true. This is called the consequent block or the consequent body of statements. If the Boolean valued condition is false, then we execute the code that appears in the alternative block, which appears after the keyword else and again wrapped within braces. Even though a conditional statement may have actually many individual statements in either the consequent or, or, or alternative block, the entire structure is simply referred to as a conditional statement. In order to execute code only if some condition is satisfied, we can use a conditional statement without the else clause or the alternative block. So in this case, if we wanted to execute code only if some condition is true, we can just include the consequent block and leave out the alternative block. Now, a Boolean valued condition is any test that returns true or false. We're going to look at six such tests or conditions. These are called the binary comparison operators. They take two operands, x and y in this case, and they compare them. And they will return either true or false based on whether or not that condition is satisfied. So for example, if x is 5 and y is 13, x less than y evaluates to true, while x greater than or equal to y evaluates to false. 
The last two are the most interesting ones because they're going to cause you the most number of problems. It's incredibly important to remember that to test equality, you must use the quote, double equals, unquote, operator, and not the equals operator. The equals operator is the assignment operator. So it's easiest to call the double equals as the equality operator and the single equal sign as the assignment operator. You must use less than or equal to and greater than or equal to for co that specific comparison. You cannot use equal to or less than or equal to or greater than when comparing two values. Basically, you want to write it as you say it. Less than or equal to. Finally, think of the exclamation mark as simply meaning not. This is going to make your life a lot easier. Thus, exclamation mark equals operator is read as the not equals operator. Now, here's a second example. The maximum of two values is based on a very simple condition. Given two values, x and y, the maximum is x if x is greater than or equal to y. Otherwise, it is y. So let's write a program that prints the maximum of two values. So here we have our function. We query the user for a value of x and a value of y. Now, in our conditional statement, we check. If x is greater than or equal to y, then we write out that the max of x and y is x. If, however, that condition is false, we will write that the maximum of x and y is y. Now, in engineering, signals often cannot exceed certain bounds. So, for example, if an incoming signal x is greater than in absolute value than some bound b, then the bound is returned. So in this example, if x is greater than b, b is returned. If x is less than negative b, negative b is returned. This is referred to as clipping a signal. Here's an implementation of clipping a signal. So we ask the user for a value x, and we have a local variable bound, and we ask the user to enter that bound. We're going to assume the user is smart and has entered a positive value of bound, but we can still check that otherwise. So now, if x is greater than, than or equal to the bound, then the clip of x is equal to the bound value. Now we are in the else clause, or the alternative block of statements. So if x is not greater than or equal to the bound, then x is less than the bound. Well, in that case, we still have two additional possibilities. First, x may be less than the negated value of the bound, in which case we print out the negative value of the bound, or alternatively, x must be between these two values, in which case we simply print out the value of x. Now that looks a little bit awkward because there's three non-overlapping cases. Either x is greater than or equal to b, x is less than or equal to negative b, or x is between these two values. And so having an if statement or a conditional statement with a conditional statement in the alternative clause, it looks a little bit awkward. Fortunately, C++ allows you to have multiple conditions. So in this case, if x is greater than or equal to the bound, the first check or the first condition, then we write the first statement. 
Then we have an else if statement. So if the first statement is false, then we have a second test. The second test is, is x less than or equal to the negated value of bound? If so, we print out the negated value of that bound. Then we have the alternative clause, and this is the code that will be executed if and only if both of the previous conditions return false. And in that case, we just write clip of x is equal to the value of x. Now, such a sequence of if else if statements is referred to as a cascading conditional statement. So if the first condition is true, then the first consequent block is executed. If it, the first condition is true, the second condition is tested, in which case the second consequent block is executed again if it, the second condition is true. If both conditions are false, the complementary alternative block is the one that is executed. You can have as many conditions as you deem necessary for the situation at hand. And as before, it is never necessary to have the complementary alternative block of code if you are only executing code based on whether or not the first, second, or third statement is true. Here is the 10 function. The 10 function is 0 outside of the interval negative 1 to 1, and inside that interval, the function forms a tent shaped peaking when x is equal to 0. Here's an implementation of the 10 function. We have a local variable x that is declared to be of type double, and we ask the user to enter a value. When cn has assigned a value to x, we then check the first condition. Is x less than or equal to negative 1? If so, we print out 0. Otherwise, if x is less than or equal to 0, now we've already checked if it's less than or equal to negative 1. So if it is less than or equal to 0, then it must be on the interval from negative 1 to 0. In this case, we calculate the value x plus 1, which gives us that line segment between negative 1 and 0. If the condition x less than or equal to 0 is also false, then we check next if is x less than or equal to 1. At this point, if x is less than or equal to 1, that means it must be on the interval from 0 to 1, in which case we print out the value 1 minus x, which gives us the third line segment. And finally, we are in the alternative clause. The alternative clause is true if it is executed if and only if all three previous statements evaluate to false, and therefore that must mean that x is strictly greater than 1, in which case the value is 0. Notice that once a condition is checked and evaluates to true, only the block associated with that condition is executed and no subsequent conditions are checked and no subsequent blocks may be executed. Now, novice programmers may sometimes want to emphasize the conditions for each block. So for example, a novice programmer might write if x is less than or equal to 0, do something, and then in the alternative block include the condition if x is greater than 0, do something else. Alternatively, the first check may be if x is equal to 0, do something, and then the alternative block includes the condition else if x is not equal to 0, do something else. Please don't do this. The second condition is 
complementary to the first. If the first is true, the second must be false. And if the first is false, the second must be true. And therefore, there is no reason to have the additional check. It actually will slow your program down. Not only that, experienced programmers will be confused. They are going to expect the second condition to not be complementary to the first one, and they will wonder why it is there. This is going to also increase maintenance, because now if you change the first conditional statement, you automatically must remember to also change the second. Now, on the right, you see a square wave. The code on the left attempts to print out the value of that square wave based on the value of x. Take a look at the code and determine whether or not it actually does work. If so, justify why it does work. And if it does not, explain what all of the errors in this cascading conditional statement are. Try actually drawing the function that is described by this cascading conditional statement. Following this lesson, you now understand the format of a conditional statement. That is the keyword if followed by a Boolean valued condition and first coming a, in braces, a consequent block of statements, which is executed if the condition is true, followed by the else keyword, which is followed by braces surrounding an alternative block of statements to be executed if the statement, if the condition is false. You know that the condition may be a comparison. Specifically, it is one of the six comparison operators together with two operands. You understand that the alternative block is not required. Also, you can have a cascading conditional statement that has two or more conditions, each with their own associated block of statements. Each of the conditions is tested one at a time, and only the code associated with the first condition that returns true is executed. If they all return false, the alternative block at the end is the one that is executed.